Hello ladies and gentlemen, Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're talking about, ugh, I'm hesitant to call this a game engine, but it can be used to create games. What it is is a way of creating 3D content, adding logic to it, and publishing it to the web. In this particular case, I am doing so in Blender. Now if this sounds very similar to something called Blender for Web or Blend for Web, that's because it was actually started by teammates or team members from the Blend for Web team. But it's also available for Max and Maya. So what we're going to do here is tech out, uh, we're in a Blender scene right now, you can see this is pretty clean. It's a, a game level. You can see you've got your, your hero over here, a world that you can navigate around, a very simple world. Um, and what you can do then is export these guys out to run in uh, Verge, basically. So you see you've even got the option of coming here sneak peek, or we can fire up the app manager uh, to see the end results of our work. And when you're ready to go, you just go ahead and do a file export, and you're going to notice the plugin for Blender added uh, some Verge 3D specific assets. So we're exporting as GLTF or GLB, which is the binary format of GLTF. And then those are accessed in the app manager to add logic to it. At the same time, you'll notice with the farmer selected right here, um, if we go to various different areas throughout, so if we go to physics or we go to the um, object data, you'll know we have these verge specific settings. So uh, there's various different settings that you can configure directly in your content creation tool that are then exported out to verge for um, handling. So once we've got this guy exported out, we've got our game level set up as we want or our product demonstration or whatever you're modeling in your model and content creation tool, you can export it out to the app manager. Now I actually already have the app manager running and this is not where I want to be, but I will showcase. All right, so I'll just shut that guy down. That was a bit of a spoiler. This is the app manager for that game we were just looking at. We can actually go back one step further, and this is the app manager for all of the demos, or if you want to go ahead and create your own app, you could do so over here. Uh, you set up, do I want physics? Do I want to write my own code? Code is done in, um, you use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript combinations, so if you're a web developer and you want more fine-tuned control, you do it that way. Otherwise, we program our logic using something called puzzles, which we will see in just a second. It's actually what you just saw a few seconds ago. Now you see here we got a number of different uh, examples done up here. I also created my own. I was obviously very lazy <laughs> with their uh, naming convention. But once you've got something, uh, this is where your project management comes in. We come in here, here's Farmer's Journey that we were just looking at. Clicking here will open up the blend file in Blender, this guy right here. So if you want to go ahead and make changes or whatever uh, to your game level, you can load it up that way. This is the export of GLTF you can preview. You can load or launch a version of it right here. So by the way, uh, audio warning. I'm going to launch up the game we were just looking at. And there's a very simple navigate around the world style game, but you saw we were in Blender, and now what you're basically just doing, walking around the world, we got some music playing, eventually we're going to start hitting some fruit. As we get more fruit, our speed's going to speed up. So again, it's not the most advanced game you ever saw in your life, but it works. So there we go. And again, we're going to get faster and faster. It's kind of like an infinite runner around a globe. So once we're happy with that, there's our game. So you can fire up, you've got basically all your controls are done from this app manager, which is installed as a local uh, web server on your machine when you install the product. Now, if you want to start adding game logic to your game or your application, that's done via puzzles. And here we are now. And this is a pretty elaborate puzzles that we're seeing right here. Um, and uh, it could be a heck of a lot simpler or a heck of a lot more complicated, but you see basically everything sort of slots together. It's very similar in a way to say um, stencil or um, construct or so on, those visual style programming language. Well, that's what you're basically doing here. So you see here, we've got a bunch of events that are fired off. So on click, we're going to do this logic. Then inside we have an if, else, and do. And inside of those, we have a bunch of nested logic. Now you can see here, we have this uh, number one. We can drop that guy out there and you can see if it's valid it fits if it doesn't it doesn't so you're basically bringing things together based off of uh, their shape so you can slot things in this way so if it fits underneath something it will go in sequence it is being enveloped by this outside puzzle piece it's a pretty straightforward way of coding you, you don't really need to understand a ton about programming to make this work but you're ultimately doing the same thing that you would be doing via script or code um, so yeah, the other thing that you find yourself doing, so here we've got a number of different events. So every second, uh, this section of code is going to fire off. Every second, this section of code is going to fire off if it meets this condition. Every frame, we're going to do this logic. And then the other thing we've got is functions. And these are basically that you'll define yourself. So we've got one down here. 
they've defined a class called start game, and this is going to be called somewhere in the logic, wherever it's going. But you see, you can define your own uh, custom functions and so on. Uh, we can add multiple um, classes here. This one's just called main. When we come up here, we've also got the initialization setting. And this is where a number of different, you know, you could set up global variables, set up the rendering settings and so on. Uh, some of the uh, top level controls for your guy, but most of the time you're going to be working in main. And as you can see across the left here, this is where the various different uh, pieces come from. So if you want an event or what you're often going to do is like say time. So if you want to do something every X seconds or um, so on, or you want to create a timer, you can do so right here, or you can remove a timer by name right here. Um, so if we want to do something every frame, you basically just drag it over here. And then inside of that, you start putting your logic. So here you can see if it's got like a plug here, it's got to have the corresponding puzzle piece over here. So it's just like assembling a puzzle. This one matches to what we've got there. So we can just drop it in here. So then if we need to start adding data, a lot of times that's via, uh, we can get those via selectors. So we can go ahead and drop the selector in. And now what the selector does is gives us access to all of the various different things that are defined. So if I head back over to Blender, you're going to notice all of the various different pieces, all of the stuff that's defined here, all of the name stuff from our export are available via selectors back in verb. So your level comes out looking pretty much exactly like it is. You can configure specific settings, but you've also got full access to your scene collection over here when you get back to your logic in Verge. All right, so that's the server running. So there, and then once you've got something you like, if it fits, you drop it into a piece and you are good to go. Same way as we've got a number of number different selectors there. We'll go down to the number category and we've got different kinds. So we've got a number here or we've got an angle. So dropped an angle and didn't really mean to do that. But so we can drop that guy into the pin. By the way, you can do copy and paste. So there we got another one. So if we want, drop it in there. You notice when we clicked it, we've got custom editors for editing that type. And you come down here, you've got all of the various different things you probably want to do. So access to materials, access to animations from the underlying system, uh, camera controls, scene controls for this is how you would switch between scenes or uh, append in new scenes. So if you wanted to load in data into it that was organized into separate scenes in Blender. So say you had your character in its own Blender file that you exported as a GLTF file, you could append it in this way. Um, then we get time, HTML control. So ultimately what you are doing here is generating an HTML file. And a lot of people that would use something like this, they use it for things like uh, product configurators. We'll actually go take a look at one. Uh, so right here, we'll head on back. So a lot of the stuff that's being done here is for things like this. So say you were selling scooters. Uh, you could create this uh, web application that runs uh, apparently kind of slow for some reason right now. And you could use it as like a product configurator. So a lot of people that are using uh, Verge use it for this kind of stuff. Another interesting thing that Verge is being used by is um, they're the moon rover simulator. So if you want to uh, do a moon rover trip, you can. Here you can see, run up the engine, light down the kickstand, turn the lights on, kick the uh, seat open. So if you were doing a Vespa configurator, you wanted to have different, different um, shaders and so on being showcased that is the kind of application that can also be done using verge but so you can add that logic behind the scenes but when we go back over here you'll notice we have html access so if you have an underlying um you know, uh, jQuery code that you want to access or so on, or you want to change the way things work, get access to HTML attributes, you can do so right here. We've also got support for augmented reality, virtual reality, playing sound, setting up physics, um, you, uh, post processing, all your logic, your ifs and loops, our loops are down here, your if and controls are right here, kind of use the combination of those together to setting game logic, text manipulation, number manipulation or arithmetic, I guess people would call that, uh, lists and dictionaries for your raw data, so you can create a dictionary of uh, keyed named valued pairs, um, you've got variable controls, a whole bunch of them, and so you see some of these are actually add fruits, these are being imported from the Blender file where it was defined, procedures, and so on. And then we've got the library section, which is kind of the miscellaneous section for workarounds and, and uh, message box alerts and so on uh, that you could just drag and drop into the screen for your use. This is basically just snippets, I guess you would call it. And then finally, we've got some e-commerce settings if that's what you're working with, if you wanted to do web commerce or special orders or so on, they are available to you right there. It's a very interesting project. Again, I really do hesitate to call this a game engine, uh, but it, it is an interesting project. And if you want to add that programmable logic to your 
uh, Blender game, or as I mentioned earlier on, it's also available for 3D Studios Max and Maya. That's exactly what it's all about. And if you don't know how to code, that that's actually a pretty straightforward way of working with things. And once again, you're working with your tool of choice. So this here is, I believe, Maya. Um, game logic that's being put together are a ton of different examples to start from. As I mentioned earlier on, this is actually being used by NASA. So if you want to go check out a pretty elaborate application, they have a, a moon rover. Um, you can you can take control of it, basically. So if you want to go check it out, it's linked off of here. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely an interesting project. As I mentioned very early on, this is quite different than a traditional game engine. But as we saw from that, you know, Endless Walker, it can be used to create at least simple-ish games. And if you're not a programmer, but you are a 3D Studios Max Maya or Blender user, this could actually be somewhat ideal for you. But finally, we're going to get into cost. Now, what we've been seeing so far is the free version. You can grab the free version and do just about whatever you want with it. It's just not a commercial product. So if you want to start shipping things, well, that's where licensing comes in. If you're a solo developer, you can get by with a freelance license. In this case, it's $290 US pricing. Uh, and it kind of goes up from there. So we've got a team and then an enterprise license. So this $3,000 license covers you for an entire enterprise. No matter how many people you've got, $3,000 license the whole place. Whereas this one is geared to revenue. I think it's $10 million or less you have to make to qualify. Otherwise, you have to jump up to the enterprise license. And you'll notice there's also a 3DS Max license. Now, what's interesting is I don't know how you buy this thing for Maya. It says straight out that it supports Maya, uh, but there's no there's no Maya. And even if we go to the next page, uh, there's still no Maya. So I, I don't understand exactly uh, what the deal is there, but yeah. So that is the pricing level on Verge 3D. Uh, again, you can grab and use it fully functioning just like I did. Uh, the trial version is... Um, completely free and full functioning. You obviously just can't ship a product with it. So if you want to start shipping something and you're a sole developer, you're probably looking at the freelancer or sole proprietorship version of this. And yeah, the one only other thing that's kind of neat about it too is they provide 10 gigs of storage space and 10 gigs of monthly traffic. So if you are doing this, you're doing your own portfolio and you want to put it online with a little bit of advanced animations or what. Ever, uh, when you're here, you can actually sit here, click any one of these links, and it will automatically publish it out to their web and give you a URL of which you can store, again, up to 10 gigabytes of data on their servers and up to 10 gigabytes of traffic on their servers um, just by clicking that button. So it publishes and hosts your application for you. Again, you don't have to use that. You can just basically take the local application yourself and you're good to go. And I've actually already published something up here. You get rudimentary controls for handling it. So if you want to take something down, you can pull it down this way. So um, I published up their lamp animation software. Uh, you can bring it down that way. And they're going to have to make that a little bit more uh, useful hopefully over time. But yeah, that is it. That is Verse 3D. As I mentioned earlier on, it's an interesting product. It's definitely, it's nice way to get a one-to-one -one representation out of your work. And if you just want to add some logic to it, but you're not necessarily a coder, that puzzles way of doing things, it's kind of tested and, and time tested and true from a number of different other game engines. So it should work pro quite well here as well. So anyways, like I said, not technically a game engine, but definitely an interesting project. Have you used this or have you used blend for web before it? And if so, what did you think of it? Let me know these things, comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.